I'd like to read some amusing leaks that have been circulating on Twitter, Reddit, and originating on 4chan. Obviously, you should take it with a grain of salt, but in case certain aspects of this uh, end up being true, you know, listener discretion advised. But, so you know what everybody's talking about, this is the leaks. Aquaman is in the game, he's in the tutorial portion, and is killed off comedically by King Shark with quips about how lame he is. Ugh. Yes, you do kill the Justice League members, except for Diana and Barry. Uh-huh. Collectibles in the game are literally just bloodies costumes? Pieces, sorry it says bloodies, costume pieces, or weapons of other DC heroes and villains who are dead or fighting somewhere else. One collector is a Riddler trophy very early on in the game, like straight out of the tutorial mission, that plays a pre-recorded message making you believe that you're going to spend the game collecting Riddler trophies again, only for the message to have Riddler's hideout attacked, mid-recording I'm guessing, with brainiac drones and a screams of pain and then finally death. You fight Superman twice, once in the beginning of the game where he wipes the floor with you and in another you have to distract him while Diana lands the hard hits. One mission has you find a kryptonite bullet in a LexCorp building full of survivors that basically are Lex Dick Riders and you have to shut down defenses and lead Brainiac drones to the building, slaughtering the survivors while you grab the bullet in the chaos. The bullet? The kryptonite bullet, forgive me. You find the bodies of Lex Luthor and Bloodsport, with Bloodsport having the bullet. You find out that Earth is doomed regardless, and Diana tells the squad about the Flashpoint Protocol, which is self-explanatory. Or self-explanatory. Oh yeah. So now, yo, need to capture Barry, Diana fucks off, trying to distract Clark while the squad completes the mission. Eventually, you find and fight Barry and knock him out, but are ambushed and knocked out by Batman, who is trying to fight the mind control. He takes Barry. Squad doesn't know what to do. However, they get a tip from Diana that Jimmy Olsen knows. Squad goes to the Daily Planet, which is filled with survivors, no Lois and Perry, they are MIA. Jimmy tells them that this source, or his sources, tell him that the Penguin has been finding and stealing equipment, caches from the Batman, all over Gotham and selling them on the black market. Jimmy then just fucking dies. <laughs> Superman crashes into the building super fast, and all that's left is his lower torso. Diana comes in and takes the fight outside with the squad following. Diana holds Clark and Deadshot is ready to shoot the kryptonite bullet at Clark, but Diana deflects it with her bracelets not wanting her friend to die and thinking she can save him. The rest of the fight is basically tiring out Superman while Diana punches and talks to him. Eventually the fight ends up back at the Daily Planet and copies the scene from Man of Steel with Diana snapping Clark's neck before he can laser beam some innocence. Man, oh man, the brain cells I'm losing. Anyways, skip to the Gotham you find... Wait, I'm sorry. There's no the Gotham. Fuck. Anyway, skip to Gotham you find Penguin and fight Ivy, who survived the events of Arkham Knight by giving herself to the green and growing a new body and says <laughs> she's defending Penguin. Because he has a rare plant that she needs in order to create a safe haven from Brainiac. Penguin says that he put trackers and all of Batman's equipment that he found. And that Bruce, under mind control, has been using these caches. And since he's not himself or purposefully choosing to not debug his equipment, it's at the Belfry in the... He almost said the Gotham again. Collectibles imply that the Bat family is dead. You find Barry in some sort of stasis chamber and fight Batman. I'm sorry about the upward inflection at the end of my voice. It just feels like insane. You know, a lot of this feels a little disrespectful. And if the Flashpoint protocol comes in at the end here, 
<sighs> what a what a dream of all oh, is all a dream. But this doesn't get interesting until part two, which is why I even wanted to record any of this because uh, even though I don't believe it, you know, I guess if the video goes somewhere, we'll find out one way or another. And on top of that, uh, I want to capture people's just genuine reactions to all of this. You know, somebody has some time to write some fiction, but we're going to see Boomer not giving a shit throws a boomerang decapitating Barry and the boomerang stuck in Bruce's throat. Everyone's pissed at Boomer while Boomer is celebrating finally killing Flash. Bruce, with his dying words and free of Brainiac's control, tells them there's a Lazarus pit in Metropolis. And to throw Barry in there. I'm sorry, this is starting to turn my stomach. Yada, yada, yada. You can find, you put the yada, yada in there. You find the pit by fighting Green Lantern, who's been taking samples of it for Brainiac. Uh, Brainiac knows about that. <laughs> oh my god. You throw Barry in there before anything happens. Brainiac takes their squad into space and caves in the Lazarus pit. Barry is assumed dead. They're going to die anyway since everything is going to be destroyed. But And they're out of range of the explosives. So they're going to auto-detonate. Oh... Like they were teleported away and because, you know, if they go out of the radius, the, the things will blow up. The final boss is just a survival wave with the members going down one by one. And you get a special cutscene if you survive for five minutes. Why would you be able to when the thing's just supposed to detonate if you get too far away? Um, the PC, whatever PC you are flipping, or whatever player character, sorry, you are flipping Brainiac off before their head explodes. Game ends with Diana rescuing Barry and telling him it's time for the Flashpoint Protocol. So just to quickly dive into some of the responses here before I go on to the other one, which was the interesting one. The top response here says, I can see this being true. The Flashpoint ending comes off as an easy way for WB Games to get around Arkham ending. And they can get back to making an Arkham sequel without the whole world knowing Batman's identity. Someone says, I also suspect it's true. Then they likely want to make a Justice League game next to adapt the... Mm -hmm, I don't know. I just don't like it. Uh, Jimmy just fucking dies. Is he also revealed to be in Afghanistan as an undercover CIA agent in the same cutscene? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got jokes. You know what I mean? I, yeah, it's all, it's all awful. It's all awful to me. Let's revive Batman to kill him again. It's, don't let this be about Conroy. Gotham Knights moment. No! <laughs> Oh, that's a spoiler. Somebody tagged that spoiler. Get a grip, Gotham Knights fans. Seems pretty believable to me. Come on. Ay, ay, ay. If this is legit, it's a bold move. People will be pissed, but I'm intrigued. What? These are starting to stink like... <laughs> Not gonna lie, this sounds awesome to me. <laughs> Man. <laughs> I'm done reading these. I'm done reading these. So, uh, part two here, okay, I know I'm going to be a bitch, but the truth is the truth, if, uh, if this, if this boy, because, because Avengers was mentioned, so let's get to it. The person who posted that, uh, stuff yesterday, um, came back to qualify, or uh, clarify, Waller is extremely underutilized, mostly used to bark orders if you try to leave the map boundaries. She'll give you a warning before killing you. Gizmo is your main merchant, selling you new guns at safe houses littered through Metropolis. Gizmo is a huge Lex fanboy. Now, the reason you haven't seen gameplay or any update is because this game was originally made as a games-as-a-service type thing. However, after Avengers... And basically any games as a service that wasn't Destiny tanked, they decided to strip those elements away for a co-op story, a third-person shooter. This uh, changed some fundamentals of the story, i.e. why they decided to go full edge, because now Flashpoint is a thing. Waller originally had a bigger role with post-game content being about trying to clean up the mess after Brainiac while trying to figure out how to deactivate the collars and basically being undercover agents for the League. The stripping of the games as a service notably changed a couple of things. Like, post-game is removed, once you beat the game, that's it. 
Ooh. Come on, man. Come on, man. Some post-game content would have been new characters. If this isn't what I I I wanted for the four to be a start, I guess I did expect for this to be a live service. That was what I initially heard. And I was thinking, okay, those characters are great. But if you bring if you bring Ivy in, if you bring Cheetah, you know what I mean? Okay, so characters like, if this is true, okay, we're just humoring it as if it is. Characters like Bloodsport and Peacemaker were almost ready to, to almost already done. Bloodsport's model was used in the game to get the kryptonite bullet. Other characters were harder to consider because the game is very loot heavy. They wanted every playable character to use guns, so while characters like Bloodsport and Peacemaker are obvious choices, someone like Enchantress would differ too much. Characters in the concept phase, Ratcatcher 2, daughter of the original Manhunter, and Deathstroke. Green Arrow was also considered to be a playable character for an expansion, however the team didn't want Ollie to use a gun, nor did they want to design and balance an entirely new set of weapons, bows, that would only fit for one character. This, this just feels like fiction. Ollie was, Ollie was then just relegated as a supporting character for post-release expansion involving Waller sending the team to Star City to find out why it hadn't been hit as hard by the invasion as other places. This, though, was also scrapped, so Ollie was relegated to just two references in the final product. The entire Flashpoint stuff is last-minute addition, added when the game was removing the games as a service features. Aside from the Justice League and Poison Ivy boss fight, there's only one side boss. More were planned as post-game content. What well, they've had all this time. What you, you know, come on, what? This boss is a parasite controlled by Brainiac. The fight takes place in an electrical plant. You would have to give the parasite energy making him stronger. Look, bro. Okay, with that out of the way, let's talk Easter eggs and collectibles. As mentioned before, Riddler Trophy and a dented helmet of fate in the center of Metropolis. You can see Ted Kors. Come on, man. Come on, whatever. Someone had way too much free time. That's how I feel. I feel like this is ridiculous. There was another part of the first that explained all of the bing bong, them making the decision to remove the city and night from canon instead of just making a separate Batman universe is an incredibly stupid decision if this is real. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody believe in that. Ain't nobody believe in that on it is. You better step. I don't think it ever occurred to me that this could be a third person shooter. Did you not see any of the trailers? Did you not see? <sighs> Assuming this is all true, I wish Rocksteady just made that Batman Beyond game instead. Would have made better use of Kevin Conroy before his passing. This can't be true. This can't be true. I would rather they they take all of, of Kevin's lines, roll him into a playable character, and just keep making maps and enemies to throw into a sandbox to play for, for however long people just want to run around and beat people up, sell some juicy booty Harley Quinn skins, make her, don't make her worse than Arkham Knight, I don't know, whoa, you know, this, yeah, I want it to, it's so weird, it's so weirdly bad. Somebody said, if this is real, this will be the downfall of Rocksteady. I think I agree. This can't be true. <laughs> Somebody said, if these leaks are real, man, this game is going to suck. It's going to be the Saints Row. 
<laughs> of Suicide Squad games. I just wanted to read it to you. That's what's been going around. It's stupid. It's awful. I hate it. And I hope that's not the case. Please, God. But, you know, they haven't been showing anything. And, and people have time to do shit like this when they won't show it. And you know what? You know what's going to be the most revealing? Is what, what Poison Ivy looks like. That'll let us know how woke this damn studio's gotten. Because it's really the only thing that we're worried about. I'm sure, we're sure the game will play fine. But how, are you going to make... Because even Gotham Knights gave us some cakes. Oh, man. I can't wait to see Ivy in, in Rocksteady's Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. I'll see you guys later.